so hopefully that's all happening and I've also turned on the live transcript um, so that is also on it should be appearing at the bottom of the screen if you'd like to turn it off you might need to move the mouse um, and find your zoom menu and then click on cc live transcript and you can toggle it on or off so um, thank you very much for joining us this morning and without further ado i'll hand over our two presenters so please welcome shuang hong and kyung yu and they are going to present on We Make the Grey White, a critical lens on proofreading services in UK academic settings. So thank you very much. Um, hi everyone, I'm Chong Yue and I'm a master's student at Durham University. Since my co-researcher, Dr. Guo is sick today and she is my supervisor this year and I will cover the presentation today and she will be charge of the slides. And maybe I can start. Um, our research topic today is we make the gray white a critical lens on proofreading services in the UK academic settings. We will firstly introduce the general context of our research and our research topic and then talk about the research background based on the review of proofread studies followed by the methodology. Then we will present our findings and discussion based on the interviews we conducted. At last, our current conclusions and the pedagogical implications will be shown. So I will now talk about the background information. The requirement of more and more international students at UK universities has resulted in an increasing number of students who need various language support. It is still not, not sure how much help non-native student writers would be permitted regarding their assessed written assignments. One issue raised from this phenomenon is that international student writing skills in the UK academic context are not satisfactory. Some professions, some professors even comment that there is an increasing number of students whose written English are not really good. Within, within the field of international student academic writing, other areas have been explored, such as lectures tax requirements and students' understanding of these requirements and of their audience, various disciplinary and institutional norms associated with writing, which vary in their stability and so on. The area of proofreading services for student writing has not been thoroughly investigated, specifically the term proofreading itself and proofreading practices are potentially problematic as different proofreaders carry out quite different types of interventions under the broad umbrella of this term. One of the few studies focusing on proofreading in student writing reveals that in the UK university context, proofreading has been unregulated. Specifically, anyone could claim themselves as a qualified proofreader, no matter whether they have relevant qualifications, experience, knowledge, or training. Concerns of the potential for proofreaders substantial and unethical interventions in student writing have not been have been raised. For example, Harvard points out that much proofreading is done by institutional outsiders, such as native speaker friends or freelance proofreaders. These outsiders may have little knowledge of university proofreading policies and specifically the degree to which the institution permits them to intervene. He further claims that such variation in proofreaders' interventions in students' writing raises ethical issues. If proofreaders' interventions are at different levels, student writers may receive help to different extents. This could affect their final grades of their assessed assignments. Based on the review of previous studies, there are two main research gaps in this area. The first one is that research on proofreading services has not gained much attention. And the second gap is that previous studies have not involved more than three different aspects and stakeholders' perspectives. Therefore, our study aims to explore different opinions about proofreading in student writing from the perspective of international students, EAP teachers, module, module lecturers, and proofreaders. 
our students participants are Chinese students who are part of the largest international subgroup, which needs further investigation. The uniqueness of our star student participant is that they have different EAP proficiency due to their different academic backgrounds. While all of them are Chinese native speakers, their EAP writing is influenced by their mother tongue and they hold similar attitude towards academic integrity and ethical issues because of being exposed in the context of the Chinese academic settings before studying in the UK. Some of our teacher participants have the dual roles of an EAP teacher and a proofreader, which provides a multi-dimensional views of, the, of our research topic. From my personal point of view, both of us or users of proofreading services are interested in EAP teaching and once were EAP learners. That is the intentional motivation for this study. In order to make clear what we refer to when talking about proofreading in our research, we need to get the, give the term proofreading at least a journal definition. According to Harvard, Austin and Macaulay, the definition of proofreading in student writing is as follows third party interventions that entail some level of writing allotation of assessed work in progress. In comparison with that definition, the more traditional restricted definition of proofreading for publication is a process of defining typographical linguistics or positional errors or omissions. It could be seen that the definition of proofreading for publication is much more concise and precise than the definition of proofreading for student writing. That might be the reason why the industry of proofreading for students is unregulated. Actually, there are different terms that proofreaders use to introduce their services, such as proofreading, editing, and error correction, though proofreading has been the most popular one. Because of the term proofreading and its related practice are not consistently regulated or at least not universally regulated, previous studies demonstrate different, different views of this topic. According to Turner and Scott, ethical issues in proofreading services could be solved by the faculty or the university. The term proofreading is not related to changing content or meaning, but not all proofreaders and students are aware of this restriction. It is challenging for international students to achieve the standard required by lectures and markers. Therefore, some form of collaborative or consultative services or help should be involved. They even suggest that inappropriate interventions may result in students' loss of ownership of their own work. In general, Turner and Scott expressed their concerns and warnings regarding the potential danger of inappropriate interventions of proofreaders. In contrast, the views of two different sides are summarized in Bali in Harvard, Austin, Macaulay with regard to the ethics involved in proofreading. People who are concerned about the ethics of proofreading hold the following arguments. Proofreading serves to mask deficiencies of students at UK universities, while their students are required to communicate professionally in English. Students are responsible for identifying and uh, correcting errors in their writing. The predominance of proofreading services may cultivate a dependency culture. Student writers may seek a false sense of security from these services. Proofreaders may be incompetent or intervene in an exactly inappropriate manner by altering content, focusing, focusing on surface level problems such as grammar and syntax may give students the impression that these problems are more important than problems at the level of content or argumentation. Members who are in favor of proofreaders hold different opinions. It is understandable for international students to seek proofreading services if universities ask for linguistics perfect or error-free texts. Supervisors may offer their help to their students at different levels. When students are struggling with the language, proofreaders are their only choice for help. Universities could help their students solve linguistic problems or challenge because they accept their students onto their programs. 
it can be seen that from both studies that universities or faculties should play an important role in solving issues related to proofreading in student writing. Um, due to the time limit, I will skip the following slide and move to the methodology part. Um, the, the approach uh, due to the, our methodology that we used, the approach of semi-structured interview was applied in our research. Till now, we have already in interviewed 14 participants, including six students, five teachers, two of whom are also EAP teachers and three proofreaders. The questions in the interviews vary according to the identity of the respondents. Now I will introduce our research participants. As you can see in the interviewee profiles, our student participants have different academic backgrounds. Some were undergraduates of ordinary universities. That is to say, they went to a Chinese medium university without specific EAP training. Some were undergraduate students of Sony British joint universities. These students have EAP training experiences to a certain degree these differences between uniqueness to our research. Simultaneously, some of our teacher and proofreader participants also have more than one role and different relevant experiences, which provide us with different perspectives to further understand our research topic. As you can see in the profiles, teacher two and teacher four work for incessional course and processional course. Teacher two also works for one-to-one -one consultations. Our proofreaders also have different work experience. For instance, proof one, proofreader one was a professional teacher at, at UK universities, an EAP, an English teacher in different countries and the ELTS examiner. It was also interesting to hear from proofreader two that she runs workshops for proofreaders at universities. We believe the diversity of participant backgrounds can be one of the novelties of our research and bring more insights to our results. Now we are going to share our current findings and discussion. All of our research participants will ask about their definition of understanding of proofreading services. All participants mentioned that proofreading services refers to sentence level correction of spelling, grammar, or punctuation. Students and proofreading participants agree that proofreading services should ensure the clarity of writing. Several students and lecture participants define proofreading services as advice from the second eye. There are also some mismatches in terms of participant definitions of proofreading services. Students participants and EAP teacher participants have different opinions on whether proofreading services should involve comments on the structure. Furthermore, as the pro pro providers of such a kind of service, our proofreader participants have more specific definitions, which include eight categories, as you can see on the slide. But they have different opinions on whether proofreading should be defined as a service that levels up student writing proficiency. So it is not difficult to notice that Participants cannot reach an agreement on the definition of proofreading, which naturally results in different attitudes towards it. When concerning the definition of proofreading services, participants from four different parties mentioned Grammarly. One student pro provides a metaphor that proofreading is Grammarly with a soul. Inspired by this interesting metaphor, it it might be acceptable to define proofreading services on the basis of the definition of Grammarly. As you can see on the slides, the Grammarly website states that it can provide not only basic writing suggestions about spelling, grammar, and punctuation, but also the improvement suggestions on word choice, clarity, tone, style, and formality level. From this perspective, proofreading services can be defined as service in which proofreaders offer suggestions about sentence level corrections, such as spelling, grammar, and punctuation, as well as word choice, clarity, tone, style, and formality. But it is undoubted that Grammarly and proofreading are different because the former involves a machine while the latter involves human beings. 
This naturally involves the discussion of the ethical problems in providing services. Our participants were also asked about their opinions about the relationship between the, the relationship between ethics in academic writing and proofreading. All participants reached an agreement that the ethical problems of proofreading services come from rewriting and the suggestions related to content. For instance, a student we interviewed deemed that markers would focus more on the content of their assignment. If the proofreader do not comment on the content of their work, there should not ex exist any problems in proofreading services. And actually, student participants in our research do not expect proofreaders to comment on their content. But when proofreaders were asked about what they do during proofreading more specifically, responses differ. Proofreader one said, if he found he specialized in the subject area of the student writing, he would ask whether the student need him to comment on the content. Proofreader three said she would alert students if they fail to address the essay question. So it can be said that it is the proofreader who pushed the limits of proofreading and make it a gray area and unethical. Although participants seem to agree on the fine line of proofreading, they have different opinions on the academic integrity in the improvement of student language after using proofreading services. When students were asked about their expectations of proofreaders, they all said that proofreaders should ensure the writing could be well understood by markers. But most student participants do not realize the relationship between ethics and proofreading services if their language is leveled up by proofreaders. Two student participants still insist that academic integrity depends on the creativity of the content rather than the language. Only one student participant thinks proofreading services may violate academic integrity because she always says proofreading services and the ghost writers at the same time in the advertisement, which results in her bad impression on proofreading services, and she regarded it as ethically problematic. All of the proof proofreader participants pay attention to the clarity of the work they proofread. Two of them have opposite opinions on whether proofreaders should level up student writing. Proofreader 3 said it is proofreader's job to level up student work. In contrast, proofreader 2 responded that proofreaders should not proofread work written by students with low written proficiency since their interventions will level up student performance. According to proofreader 2's response, she has clearly, clearly realized that proofreaders are not allowed to level up student performance. However, unconsciously, she helps students get more marks, though the improvement might not be that significant. Furthermore, in our interviews, we did ask lectures about their tolerance of student language and the marking criteria. All teachers said that the language should not impede the understanding of the message. Most of them just follow the department marking criteria. Now, based on our current responses, we want to make a short summary. Participants from different parties all pay attention to the clarity of the work, and it is the real ethical problem of proofreading services rather than the content issue, because proofreaders may help ensure the clarity of the student writing and make it fulfill the marking criteria or increase certain marks. However, students are sometimes not competent to express their ideas. In other words, the assignment do not present their actual language ability regarding proofreading ethically problematic. Another ethical issue of proofreading services exists in the aspect of fairness. More than one student thought it is unfair to students who do not have a second eye to check the clarity of their works. Teachers also acknowledge that the issue of the fairness regarding the involvement of proofreading services. We also think it is important to discover the reasons why proofreading services emerge and become prominent, which might give us more ideas about the relationship between ethics in academic writing and proofreading services. 
Firstly, all participants mentioned marks, but there also exists a mismatch that teachers think that students want to achieve a higher marker, but the intention of the students who found a proofreader in our research care about not losing marks. From this perspective, although the output of proofreading services could let students get a relatively higher mark, does that really mean students who use proofreading services violate academic dishonesty? We think it is uncertain. In addition, both students and teachers mentioned pressure from parents or the society, which pushed students to find a proofreader. Furthermore, one student mentioned competition. She said if someone finds his or her classmate using the proofreader services, he or she might also go to a proofreader to achieve fairness for him or, her, for, or herself. In addition to this surface, reasons, we have explored some deeper reasons for the images of proofreading services. Firstly, if students want others to check their spelling, grammar, and clarity, it can be said that these students are not competent in the areas of English, academic writing, and ac academics. You may say it might be the student's own issue if they are not in incompetent, but we think not really. Both lecturers and proofreaders comment that university entry requirements such as L6 or 7 could not ensure students to be comp competent on their programs, making such university entry requirements not that reasonable. And it is also the university fault to let students in. Moreover, uh, after the university allows students in, what the university provided is not sufficient. For instance, one-to-one -one consultation appointments are insufficient. EAP teachers assume that students have the capability of writing academic writing, so they focus on teaching students the norms of academic writing and ignore English language teaching. One lecturer directly said that language support in universities is not enough, and one English teacher mentioned that students should be offered specific academic literacy support. From this perspective, we deem that the universities should take more responsibilities. Our participants were also asked about the differences between EAP teachers or teachers from one-to-one -one consultations and proofreaders, as some of them naturally compare them. Firstly, EAP teachers or teachers from one-to-one -one consultations are qualified, and students expect to learn from the feedback given by these teachers why a proofreader services have both good or bad proofreaders and the barrier for entry this industry is quite low. So several students said that they do not trust the proofreaders, let, let alone learning from them. Secondly, lecturers and students think that communication between EAP teachers and students is always a dialogue while feedback proof from proofreading is always a monologue. From this aspect, EAP lessons and one-to-one -one consultations are more pedagogical since students can communicate with EAP teachers while they cannot sit next to the proofreaders. Lecturers and students also agree that proofreading works on the writing, which is the product, while English language support works on the writer, which is the person, the student. In this regard, Students could learn more from AAP teachers and one-to-one -one consultations as their aims is to help students improve their academic skills. However, when students were asked about the role of proofreaders, one of them regards proofreader as helps, and two of them thought they could learn from proofreaders. From this perspective, it is possible for students to learn from proofreaders if they are qualified, and this gives us some implications. In summary, our current study have conducted interviews to attempt to define proofreading, investigate the reasons that cause the images and features of proofreading services. We also explore the relationship between proofreading and ethics in academic writing. We are also hoping to build foundations for proof providing some possible solutions in terms of proofreading services. Based on our findings and discussion, we have come up several specific solutions, which involves three aspects that are school, proofreaders, and students. At the school level, 
we think the school or department should put forward university policy about whether proofreading is permitted, which offers evidence for students and proofreaders. Additionally, we think it is better to have a union of proofreading services in the UK academic settings, ensuring each university has the same standards. If the university allows proofreading services, it should involve four parties, which are proofreaders, students, supervisors, and regulators. To be specific, if students want to find proofreaders, they need to get the consent from their tutors or supervisors. If either proofreader or student violates the rules, they can report to the supervision department. Although it is not realistic to include proofreading services in one-to-one -one consultations, universities can consider including proofreading services as a separate department, which is similar to one-to-one -one consultations and recruit qualified proofreaders for the sake of poverty safety of students and proofreaders, preventing them from being cheated by fake information or dishonest client. At the same time, both proofreaders and one-to-one -one consultants can work together to develop student ability in academic writing. The former focuses more on student academic literacy and the latter focuses more on the norms of academic writing. Furthermore, as stated in the discussion part, since it is the university fault to let students enter universities, they should take the responsibilities to develop student language proficiency. Firstly, Precessional courses should be open to all candidates as no one is a native of academic writing. Secondly, one-to-one -one consultations should have more appointments and more consultants. Thirdly, EAP teachers should not only teach students norms of academic writing, but also focus on basic English language teaching or specific academic literacy if the student need. We believe that only the English language support is well developed can student academic writing develop developed largely as well. As for proofreaders, we think proofreaders should get proofreading qualifications or join a professional body, which could educate proofreaders about what they should do or should not do. This could ease the ethical problems to a large extent. In addition, we think EAP teachers can be trained to be proofreaders as they know academic writing and have experience in teaching students making the process of proofreading more, pedag more pedagogical. As for students, they should have a clear understanding of proofreading services and should be aware of relevant university policies and follow them. And we hope these solutions can make the gray areas white. And that's all for our presentation today. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you very much to our presenters. I'm going to stop the recording. Um,